right, we're going to do something different today. By the way, first, hi, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. If you like my channel, if you like what I'm going to be doing today, or if it helps you with anything in terms of deciding what to buy, if it's insightful, please consider supporting me on Patreon, and please consider bookmarking the Linsoul affiliate link for whenever you do decide to go shopping. I'll get a small part of your purchase um, order. Um, not your order. I won't, it's not like I'm going to get some of your, your cart items. <laughs> I would get a commission. That's what I mean to say. Um, but what do we think? Let's go right to it. What do we think about the uh, Hype 2 versus the um, Chopin here? Now, your immediate thought might be, Dan, why are you comparing something that's probably something like $300, something like that, the Hype 2, to something like the Chopin, which is under $200? Well, yeah. I think it's in the realm when you get to like 150 to 300, maybe even 400, you're in this kind of realm where people are willing to save a little bit more if something is much more their taste, right? And I really do think that the Hype 2 is worth comparing. It's kind of slowly but surely becoming a staple for me in terms of that reference point, uh, especially if we're talking things that are a balanced armature, dynamic driver, hybrid design, which a lot of these products seem to be. Um, so we're comparing them. And I do think that the Chopin is uh, a definitely different taste. So we're going to explore how they're different in taste today. I'm going to start by saying, uh, and feel free to rewind if I've already talked enough that you forgot what you heard. Uh, it's back to the start of the video. I think that the Chopin is already showing how it's a thinner sound if I will, um, it's less, at least a, a kinder way to say it would be less weighted. It's more of a brighter approach. It's more of, and, and brighter has a bad connotation sometimes of being like too much treble, but that's not what's happening here. Um, what's happening here is that the Chopin has just a little bit more upper mid energy, but when you raise the volume to hear that upper mid energy, um, you hit that moment where you're at that listening volume where you don't want to go much further. Whereas something like in the Hype 2, you can keep, because it has a lower upper mid energy, you can keep lifting it to that listening level and you'll also be lifting all that bass and everything else with it. So I think that's what helps explain the well-roundedness. You know, if you have one region that's really high or higher compared to other regions, then you're going to reach that listening limit, right, of where you don't want to go much higher to be comfortable. Um, in that gear much sooner. And so these other regions that are relatively lower, like the bass or the upper treble, won't be as audible and you'll lose those qualities in your total experience, if that makes sense. If I make, if that was too fast, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll explore this more uh, further. Um, but I actually wanted to do something a little different today. And this might extend the commentary more than usual. I'm sorry. We're going to listen a little less to the demos and we're going to listen a little bit more to Mr. Dan. <laughs> Uh, Dan's audio reviews talk about um, and analyze why we're hearing what we're hearing. So if you bear with me, let's look at some graphs together. Uh, I know a lot of people want to look at graphs. Some of you might have already been like, oh, I've heard enough of graphs. Some of you might be like, wait, 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 Dan's looking at graphs? Yes, I'm looking at graphs. Let's, let's look at it together <laughs> and let's try to see. I measured both of them. I measured everything you're going to see today. Let's see if we can spot where we would hear this difference in a thin Chopin compared to a weighty Hype 2. Now immediately, what do you notice, right? Without me saying anything, pause it if you need to, look at what you find in it, and where do you think you find more weight? How does, how does the Hype 2 come off as more weighty with this much overlap? I'll give you a second. Okay, so immediately, one of the first things you notice is if your eyes jump to the base region, expecting that the weightedness must derive from a big difference there, you'll actually notice that the Hype 2 is not a substantially bigger bass player. It's not where a lot of the weightedness is coming from. Yes, you're going to get a couple dB um, in the 20 to 30 hertz area, which is the deep into the sub bass, and that's going to give you a general increase in this like warmer background feeling, and I do think that contributes. I do think that would contribute uh, to the Hype 2's weight, but I don't think it's the total picture. I think what's happening here is actually what I explained before, where you look at the upper mids in the Chopin, you'll notice that the entire region from 1 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz is about 1 to 2 dB greater than the Hype 2. And I think, I have a theory about this, I think that if you up the volume to, to hear those like upper mid regions of your instruments, the vocals uh, or whatever harmonics and the male vocals may be playing up there, whatever, 
when you raise the volume on that region, you're going to stop at the same vocal point, right? The same vocal volume. But whereas the hype two might be raised a couple more dB to get to your listening volume, right? Uh, for the upper mids, it will lift up the bass with it. So in reality, even though the graphs look similar like that, I think we really ignore this reality, this practical application of the frequency responses of the flavors that we're getting from IEMs. We don't always consider how volume adjustments make a huge difference. And so suddenly the overlap becomes sort of moot, actually, because you're going to raise the hype to possibly a couple more dB so you hear those upper mids more clearly as much as you would hear them in the Chopin. But along with those 2 dB, you're getting 2 dB more everywhere else, right? Think about that. So n suddenly, you are going to have more bass playing in your ear. You're going to have more lower mids and everything in between. This is my only theory, but, you know, only a theory for now. But, yeah, go with me here. Now, here's the other thing the, that the Hype 2 does that's kind of interesting. When you, when you have that upper mids, like if you look way up in the upper mids, it, I mean, sorry, upper treble, you can see that the Hype 2 has a, a big divide in its upper treble. It tries to go higher there. And this is in a region where a lot of people have um, low treble sensitivity um, and with due to age, age-related hearing loss. And just naturally, we might not pick up too much there because a lot of people kind of cut off at 17 kilohertz anyway, 17, 18, in what's audible to them. So it's going to give you this sense of like this kind of, just like this, the, the low end, the 20 to 30 hertz gives us this low end, deep background warmth, but not detail. I feel like the upper treble in that 15 kilohertz plus area gives us a kind of background sense, almost kind of like unsure if it's really happening, but it is there, a background sense of clarity and air. Um, but if it's too much, it can be like somehow you hear like a sizzle that you can't quite place. And that could happen to a kind of um, harsh, like really thin sibilance that you can't quite place if it's too much. But I don't think it's too much. It's like just right. I do have an EQ profile, though, that tries to play with this stuff all around that I think you should check out. But in any case, let's move on, okay? That's enough about this analysis. We're going to move on for now. Wow, this, is, this could be its own whole video, really. Um, <laughs> maybe I need to shorten this whole thing to accommodate this long, this long style commentary on, on graphical analysis now. I don't know. My whole format needs to change. We'll see how this video goes. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm getting live stream vibes here. If anybody's seen my live streams, I ramble there uh, incessantly. Um, okay, so let's move on. <laughs> let's see if we hear the differences now between the Chopin and other competitors. Let's listen to the uh, uh, Hype 2 again with a different track to hear these differences pronounced again, see where these graphical differences make a difference, and then let's put on the Awful Performer 5 as well. Okay. I drive on the streets cause she's my companion I walk through the hills cause she knows who I am She sees my good deeds and she kisses me windy And I never worry, now that is a lie I don't 
Okay, so let's actually go straight. I'm kind of interested in starting right off the bat with the graphs this time. Um, now let's compare the Chopin. Sorry if the colors changed between my measurements and what colors I chose for the sh to represent the Chopin. Hopefully that's not confusing to anybody. But you'll look at the, the legend is on the bottom of the screen if you're not sure. The Chopin now compared to the Performer 5 it has something is interesting going on. The Performer 5 is lower than the Chopin in the upper mid area, but even more than the Hype 2. So what's going to happen here is that in some areas, you'll get the sense that, depending on how high you put the volume, you'll get the sense that the Performer 5 has even more weight. And then, because as you up the volume to ma match those upper mid excitements, you'll get a lot of this other weight elsewhere that we see that hasn't been hindered down, like the bass response. Okay, and I think we clearly do hear that. The Performer 5 has this across the board. It doesn't even follow the same curvature in that bass end. Like the Hype 2, if you, if you were to look back at the Hype 2, the Hype 2 generally follows the same curvature, the same kind of uh, angle, if you will, of the curvature um, in the bass region as the Chopin. It has that same kind of hump aspect to it, but the Performer 5 is more of this like gradual slope. And you hear with ones I've noticed when you have IEMs that have a gradual slope in the bass, they come off. They can come off as a little more like of a smoothed, warm effect, whereas the humps can be a little bit more because they're not bleeding as much. They kind of dip. They 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 jut down sharper before entering the mids. The hump style basses will have a more pronounced detail separation, right? Because you don't have as much bass that's filling your headspace or taking over the driver or whatever it's doing that bass does to muddy up the picture when, it, when it's a more slopey thing like the Performer 5. So you're going to get a little bit more detail, a little bit more separation perceived, possibly a little less warmth in the Hype 2 and the Chopin. But it is nice when, the, when something does have a gradual slope like the Performer 5 and it does it well and it balances it with the rest of the response. Like it gives you more in the treble to balance out that muddiness, the potential muddiness, or it gives you enough energy in the upper mid somewhere. It can make up for itself. It can still come off as well balanced and detailed despite the mid bleed. Um, but personally, uh, uh, I do prefer the Hype 2 still um, between the three of them. For me, they, they all have different pockets in their flavor profile. E each of them have a different area throughout the response relative to each other that kind of give them their own excitements and their own weaknesses. For the Chopin, I think it has this brighter sound. It has a little bit more of this detail forward sound, but it's missing some weight. The Awful Performer 5 is more of this uh, relaxed kind of low end sound, but it's just something about it isn't detailed enough. There's something just a little ever so slightly missing that I want, and it's kind of like an oddball nature to it. Like there's something about I think that bumpiness, that up and downness, particularly like where it where it goes down, where it goes up. I mean, if you look at that curvature on the Performer 5's graph, you got two kilohertz as a, a, pi a spike, then you got three kilohertz or 2.8, you're going down. Whereas like if you compare it to the Chopin, the Chopin is a smooth ride up and it continues to peak up in that region. It doesn't dip up and down like that. And I think the Awful Performer 5 has a unique sound in large part perhaps due to that up and down specific character that it offers that other IEMs, a lot of them don't. And so it does kind of stand out in the IEM field. A lot of people do hear the Performer 5 and they go, huh, that's really special and different. But it's not my kind of special and different. It's like, okay, I pretty much really enjoy it, but I don't know if I love it. But the hype too brings me closer to that love. And I think that the Chopin is just, it's not hitting everything perfectly where I want it to. It's like it has that detail in those upper mids that we keep seeing with that curve, but it doesn't, I feel like it needs more, I feel like that whole bass hump is, I like the bass hump, I like that for this case, it maybe doesn't want to have a smooth bass curve, but if it just, it was somehow able to lift that whole hump upward a couple dB, I think that might fix a lot of the issues. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Or maybe really just lowering that one to five kilohertz, two dB, maybe an EQ setting, one to five kilohertz, two, one, one dB even down could help fix the issues of balance that I'm personally finding. I don't know. You know, suddenly I'm becoming a graph 
reviewer what is happening <laughs> but i'm using an interplay with demos so we can kind of try to we can try to hear what the analysis is saying i think this is a nice comprehensive approach we might be taking a little bit longer to talk but maybe interesting maybe not maybe this will make me a worse video yet maybe i'll have the worst retention ever and then i'm going to look at the graphs and everybody's going to be leaving the video like two minutes in as soon as they start talking i don't know it's my channel and i'm having fun with it i'm trying new things deal with it bruh uh, <laughs> All right, guys, I don't, I'm don't. i really trying to keep this simple today. We're going to try one more clip, one more little um, area for me uh, afterward to conclude my remarks, um, and then that'll be it. Let's just put in one more thing because I just think it's interesting. Let's put in something much cheaper now, the SimGot EW200. Um, God, did I pronounce that right? Or, or say the num model number right? But it's my current favorite SimGot model. Um, although incidentally in preparing for this video, like days after I formed my opinions, um, I was listening to each of these IMs, including the EW 200 and the EW 200 was like suddenly a little brighter. So well, <laughs> I'm not sure if I love it as much as I used to. Um, it's interesting how moods change, but I still do think that the EW 200 is a worthwhile consideration. It is, you're, you'll hear it too. It, it's, it's interesting how clean it is for what it's doing. More to come on that.
Okay. Oh, did I quit my graph? Oh, I think I did quit it. Oops. Okay. So what I find very interesting about the EW200, let's put that graph on the screen. This is, this is graphing mode to <laughs> review. Um, it, it, you wouldn't be totally off by thinking that maybe the EW200 is kind of like a, a poor man's version of what the Chopin generally flavor profile wise is, is doing. What I, but, but here's the thing. All those little spots, even though it's almost trying to follow the general pathway, those little spots make a difference, okay? A couple dB in the sub bass, more on the EW200, will do something there. Although you wouldn't know it because there's also that like general less kind of, it kind of cuts into where, whereas the Chopin, let's start from left to right. Let's just read this graph left to right, shall we? So if you go from left to right, the Chopin has this hump that, generates a little bit more flavor, a little bit more energy between 40 to 100 hertz, or yeah, 40 to 150 hertz, actually, or whatever, 45 hertz to 150 hertz, something like that. And that might not look significant, but when you generally have a little bit more flavor in a spot, you notice a difference. A little bit of flavor here, a little bit of flavor there, and the profile in totality does become impression uh, it, it does become significantly different on how we are impressed upon by it it really comes across as a totally different flavor profile even though you could be fooled to thinking it's very similar and don't get me wrong there is a similarity to be had that general path being followed does mean it's going these two are going to be more similar than something that follows a completely different trajectory. Like a Fat Freak Maestro SE with a huge bass lift is going to be substantially different in its bass. It, like it's substantively more different because it's just a completely different path. But these little differences add up, I would argue, tremendously um, to what it actually sounds like. And hey, you just don't believe me? Go back in the demo or wait to the next clips to hear them play back and forth. You'll hear a difference. Don't tell me you don't. OK, the the individual recordings might not be 100 percent true to life, especially because your own playback device at home is going to flavor these demos. Fair enough, you know, but the relative difference is my case here. And you can hear it substantially despite the graphs being fairly similar in their path, their pathing, if you will. So let's go back to analyze, analyzing. I kind of have fun with this. Let's go left to right again. Let's look back at the beginning at the base. Um, so, you know, you got a couple more dB on the EW200 sub bass. You got mm, a, like a half dB or so kind of spanning across uh, on the Chopin as an increase. So you got a, a kind of different play, a different flavor profile there. Maybe you have a little more background warmth on the EW200, but it's so subtle you might not notice a difference. Maybe the Chopin uh, comes off a little bit more... Um, thumpy with the low end harmonics of thumps in the low in that in that upper bass region kind of just a little bit more accentuated um but then the chopin dips right it dips of maybe one db in that one spot 200 hertz to uh 400 hertz or so again subtle kind of like tit for tat kind of back and forth differences trading off who does what exactly in which region of these bass regions but that kind of subtle difference in analysis, I don't know how often people are getting that. I don't know when they look at these things. And also, I would say that the gradualness of the EW200, the gradual sloping down is going to give you that smoother kind of effect in some sense, whereas the hump, I do argue generally, and possibly a little bit more muddiness, possibly from the EW200, but I, I don't think you get it because, let's look at the upper mids, so much of what happens with what comes off as bright or warm is not so much the curvature as much as it's the relative value it has in the base region compared to the rest. It's like if you look at the left half of this whole graph, you can make whatever, like if you cover the right side of the graph, you would have no idea if it's going to be bright or warm. But when you uncover that right half, right, and you look at the upper mids and how the treble spikes and where it does, it suddenly is so much more informative. I, in particular, uh, this is a trick that I kind of look at. Look at the peak of the bass region right now of either IEM. Look at the 50 kilohertz, or sorry, not killer. <laughs> look at the 50 hertz mark, okay? 
look at where the peak of the um, Chopin's bass hump is, uh, is. It's at the 50 hertz mark. I compare that peak's height in dB to the height of the peak in the upper mids. If the upper mids peak is significantly higher than the base peak, that relative greater difference is going to be what you hear. We, we, we kind of get in this trap where we, we kind of look at just how the base looks bigger than the mids, like how steep that, that hill looks. But I would argue a lot of what defines the warmth versus bright character is not always that steep base decline or whether it's gradual. It's the difference of the upper mids compared to the base. In this case, both of them, and I think we hear this, okay, both of them have a higher upper mid um, value compared to their base, and I think we hear them coming off as thinner. I think we hear both the EW200 and the Chopin as being thinner than the Hype 2. Now let's bring out the Hype 2 and um, into these graphs now. And let's see how this all comes together, okay? So let's look at, um, let's actually bring all of them together at once and to see if we can see these pictures that I'm trying to describe. So the Chopin and the EW200 have the highest upper mid peaking action going on. And when you compare that to the base, you're gonna have that thinned out, less weighty character. But when you have the, um, Hype 2 and the Awful Performer 5. Notice the pattern here. The Awful per Performer 5 and the Hype 2 both have upper mids that play along a lower energy, right? A lower dB, and they almost match and maybe even are lower than their base peaks. And so generally, if you see upper mids, I think I see this, um, when you see upper mids that are matching or are lower than their base peaks, you are more inclined to to be, you're more likely, I think, to find your ex, your actual listening experience to sound warmer and weightier. So, I, you know, I I I'm gonna I'm not gonna say too much more, guys. I I didn't speak at all to the actual music, to the actual instruments, as much as I usually do, because that's what happens. This is why you know people are like, I'm gonna take away if my graphs aren't Dan in the future editor editor Dan take away the graphs if you haven't already. Um. <laughs> This is my conclusion, okay? Uh, wait, no, before I get there, let me speak to the, what I was going to say. Um, I don't like to go over the graphs that much historically because this is precisely what happens. There's enough to say about the graphs and as interesting and informative as it can be, and I do want to try it, it does mean less time to actually talk to the music as, as much as I'd like to, and less time to listen to the demos. So maybe I'll find a balance. Maybe the pendulum's going to swing, and I'll, and I'll try in that perfect balance between musical description and graphical description. But um, today I'm going, I guess, more graphical. It's just where the conversation took naturally for me to be able to explain myself what I thought was, was adequately enough, um, given what I'm showing you. So anyway, here's my conclusion, all right? I, I really feel like I didn't speak much at all to my normal tempo, uh, to my normal focuses on the music today. Uh, <laughs> wow, I feel bad about that. Um, the Simgot EW200, this is my conclusion. The Simgot EW200, I think, was an interesting competitor. I think you can get a lot of value for only like 40 bucks or whatever it is. Um, but I do think it has weaknesses. I do prefer the, um, the weightier stuff in general. I do have the EW200 on my loved list right now, and I do think I, I might actually prefer the EW200 more than the Chopin, despite its cheaper cost, because there's something about the Chopin that just, and it's so slight, okay? It's so slight. But the Chopin has like maybe a dB more in the upper mids or somewhere in the treble more than I want. It's just ever so, it's not fatiguing, okay? It's not sibilant. It's not like brittle. It's just ever so slightly hinting at a brittle existence, hinting at it. It infers it a little bit too close. Like I'm like, I, I'm, I feel like my ears are against the wall hearing something that would sound brittle. Like it's, it's not in my headspace, but it's close to it. And I don't really want that feeling too much. 
I, it, it may mean like it's not for me. It's like enjoyable. I can see how it's enjoyable in a lot of ways. I still think it's the best from Giz Audio so far. I think it's the best well talents. I think uh, balanced. I think it's very tasteful. I think it is tasteful. But I think for my taste, it could be even more dampened in the upper mids, uh, so that the rest of the response can speak more. Uh, speak more, uh, particularly that low mid bass, low bass kind of region in general. I want more weight relative to the upper mids to be expressed. Um, and I get that with the hype too. I get that with the performer five. I personally would lean towards if I recommended between those two, I would recommend the hype too. Um, I think T audio is doing a phenomenal job with almost every product they release. Um, I might not always enjoy every one of their products, um, to the same extent as their previous release or something like that. Um, for example, I preferred the Monarch Mark II over the Monarch Mark III, but as a company, in terms of their taste and their tuning styles, they are onto something generally that I really dig. They never lose that weightedness that I think is essential. Just as much as I think treble is essential and upper mids are essential to give necessary detail to the headspace, and you want that clarity and you want that air offered by upper mids and treble, I do think that you also simultaneously, you got to have a nice relative balance with the bass uh, presence. I think you got to make that upper mid presence a little lower to maybe match the bass peak. If that was my one recommendation based on all these experiences I've had, I think that's a general good rule of thumb. Deviating from there w might be possible with exceptions. There might be a special case where a little peak in the upper mids might actually be like really cool, really fun, really flavorful. But I think in this particular case, it's just, it's just not working. It's not working totally as much as it, it could in theory on another IEM. Um, all right, guys, I don't know how much more I can say. Um, basically, I don't recommend the Giz Audio as like a top rec personally, but I can see how others would enjoy that uh, forward flavor without as much warmth present. But I want a little bit more warmth. I want a little bit more weight and impact. Um, but it's nice. It's polished. It's smooth for what it's doing. It's not fatiguing. Um, so it's good. It's good. It's just not for me. That's all. Um, I prefer the hype too. I would, I would save, I would pay for that. Would I get the awful Performer 5? Because that's a little more price competitive. Like if you're limited to the price of the Chopin, would I prefer the P5? Yeah, I think I would actually. I would recommend the P5. I don't recommend it as much as the Hype 2, but I recommend it no less. I recommend it more than I would the Chopin for that, for that price anyway. But I again, I recommend the Hype 2 more. If I would say save up for it, I'd say save up for it. All right, this was sort of fun. Um, this was different. I hope I still retained a lot of you guys in my audience and you listened to my uh, attempt at a graphical analysis today. I will see you for the next one. See you around. Jo oh, join my Discord, support me on Patreon, all that stuff. See ya. Thank you for watching.